Today's Chinatown's location in Soho moved from its original home in East London due to the Great Fire of London. Its original farmland was redeveloped and over years it became one of London's hotspots, popular with the then intelligentsia and a magnet for immigrant communities. Soldiers returning from the Far East had fallen in love with Chinese cuisine, which boosted the popularity of the area, attracting more Chinese businesses away from the East End to seek their fortunes, and the Chinatown of today was born. Here's our route today, exploring the pedestrianised area of Chinatown. It does sprawl further than the area we're looking at. We start our journey at the Chinatown exit of Leicester Square tube station. If we carry on up the road a bit, we come across Bunsik. Korean hot dogs, very Instagrammable food, and really nice staff. Anyway. Turning left, just a few metres along Charing Cross Road and into Little Newport Street. From bakeries to bars and restaurants to reflexology, Lyle Street is the start of this thriving hub of oriental wonder. Souvenir shops, health clinics, barbers, travel agents, located all in this one little street. Now let me tell you about Hongling Herbal Medicine. Whenever I've passed, a young lady always beckons to me and asks if I need some relaxation. And I'm absolutely fine. It's nice she's so worried about my welfare. And at the corner of Lyle Street is Q, a quite expensive gay bar, all decked out for Halloween. Like a lot of cities, Chinatown and the gay quarter share adjacent areas, and this bar is definitely central. There are a number of new food outlets opened recently, now the pandemic is coming under control. Bun House is one of them. A limited menu of buns, shumai, rice boxes and soups, but I'm told it's really tasty. Walking up Lyle Street, the whole area is bedecked with red traditional Chinese lanterns. It really makes this area so special. The view to the left isn't that nice here, the backs of the casinos and cinemas of Leicester Square, but this is the cinema where all the premieres take place. Ah now, Siwoo, one of the big three supermarkets in this area, and my favourite a labyrinth of all things oriental food related. The usual oriental fruit, vegetables, noodles, cans, frozen goods, they're all present. It's great for finding water spinach, which is my favourite vegetable.
There are a couple of very average chain pubs and bars on this street, the Slug and Lettuce being one of them. It does open early for breakfast. And close by a truly magical hole in the wall, May Sweet Bites. Superb desserts in bubble waffles. I can't recommend this place enough. Now we get to the new and very splendid Chinatown gate on Wardour Street, looking to the edge of Leicester Square. Erected in 2016, it was made by Chinese artisans and assembled in London. The gate is in the style of the Qing Dynasty. My favourite restaurant in Chinatown is ironically Brazilian, Fogo de Chao, and it's all down to this little fella here, the bull. This eatery is an all-you-can-eat Redizio restaurant with an extensive buffet. It's great value and way above average food, and at the end you can get shots of the traditional cachaça. But how you dispense it? Well, let's just say it takes balls to get that drink. And the lasagna from the buffet bar is top-notch. Carrying on along Wardour Street, there's a little bit more variety of food here. Well, the bull probably gave that away. My arm is getting really tired. If you look up when you get to the O'Neill's pub, you'll find a plaque commemorating the home of jazz and rhythm and blues. You've got to love a restaurant called Wonky. A little further on the street is Viet Food, a cracking modern Vietnamese specialising in tapas sized plates, pho, bun and bento type boxes. It's highly recommended. There are a couple of value buffet restaurants here. You notice I didn't say quality, but hey, if you're on a budget, you certainly can fill your tummy for a small amount of cash here. Now into Gerrard Street, the main street with larger, better known restaurants. Here you'll find a number of bakeries, and in a bit I'll show you my favourite. Now, Golden Dragon. There's always a queue outside. It's a Cantonese and Pekingese specialist and its dim sum lunches are rated highly. Well, it wouldn't be a Chinatown without roast meats on display.
now let me show you my favourite bakery, Goldgate Cake Shop. Beautiful cakes. And who wouldn't want a warm egg tart from here? Yum! That's the one I had in mind. Oh, this is new. A Taiwanese chicken shop. I'll have to take primary camera boy there. Look up when you get to the Golden Phoenix. There's a brown plaque. I think that's the first time these words have ever been said. Now what can I say about Leung's legend? Its name is a tip of the hat to the water margin legend and this restaurant serves traditional Taiwanese food but also soup and a fried bread box. Yeah, that's uh, unusual and the foods are okay. And if you look up when you reach Paddy Power you'll find a plaque celebrating London's premier silversmith. Ooh, dragon fruit. I was looking for those. I do want to make some dragon fruit ice cream for my other channel. I'll come back for those later. I love these maze-like supermarkets here. Now this building is the back of a London Fire Brigade fire station. On the left we've got the newer refurbished units. They do look a little soulless and lack charm at first, but they are embedding in okay. Ah, another favourite, taiyaki. Japanese fish shaped cakes, in this case filled with custard. It's great street food and the smell around here is amazing. Now I call this little street Bubble Tea Alley for obvious reasons.
Now, if you're looking for a great sweet treat, Mama Sun's Dirty Ice Cream is excellent. I absolutely love the calamansi ice cream. Well, now it's lunchtime, so time for some Korean chicken wings. The crispy skin on these is superb. So why not hop on board for the next one? Fancy exploring Borough Market? And don't forget, if you like cooking and recipes, the Brunch AF channel is just for you.